o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I don't know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's time for the DJ Roundtable, as always, on a Tuesday night. Hopefully, you're enjoying us. Uh, you're joining us live and watching us live, and you're enjoying the show as well. If uh, you are here live, don't be afraid to talk in the chat. If you're watching us on YouTube, put a comment down below in the comment area on YouTube. We greatly appreciate it. And please, don't forget to smash that like button, click subscribe, and don't forget to put the bell on, the bell icon. Make sure you get your uh, notifications of what is happening. Uh, we put we put a lot of information out there, and we try to give a lot of information uh, to help uh, other DJs. And as always, we appreciate you for watching the show, so thank you. And to the new subscribers, thank you for coming and joining the DJ Roundtable. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go to everyone else's social media. Uh, cool thing is on TikTok. Uh, mm -hmm. Solstice is here on YouTube. Fire's on YouTube, Jeff's on YouTube. Also, they have Instagram handles, so go through all their social media and click on their social media and follow them everywhere. Give them support, show them some love, and show them how great of a job they do. Uh, we also have uh, DJ Brantley might be coming in later. He's got a wedding tonight, and Dwayne is out doing some other stuff uh, for his business. He may not be able to join us. We'll see. Uh, as always, we never know who sneaks in, who comes by and stops by and says hi, but we do have our normal uh, roundtable mostly. And returning after a little hiatus is DJ Fire, which, you know, he has like 15 <laughs> YouTube channels he's run in. He has an empire down there in central Illinois. Uh, he also has a landscaping service, which, you know, it's summertime, landscaping is very busy. Uh, he puts a lot of videos out there, so if you get a chance to, he's a drone video uh, channel now with cool drone shots. He has his uh, Nathan 343 channel. He has his uh, landscaping channel, so make sure you go and follow him and, and subscribe. But everyone here is a DJ. Everyone here does what you do, and that is make entertainment and fun atmospheres at events. With that said... Um, First thing first, I want to go off to the panel. Um, hey, Jim, what's going on? Hopefully you're rocking out there in California and enjoying yourself. Another great DJ right there in California. And uh, hopefully you're having fun and watching. The uh, The one thing I wanted to go for and go after uh, is a thing that I run into every so often, not all the time. And you guys could tell me if you run into it in your areas and what you do. Uh but facilities having their own sound systems, be it for a ceremony, be it for uh, the main area, be it for whatever you're using, cocktail hour or whatever, uh, dinner, a lot of facilities have, not a lot, but a good amount, have their own sound system. They want you to come in with your laptop, your controller, plug into their sound system whatever way they plug into it, you know, and I've seen a gambit of different connections. I've seen RCA jacks. I've seen basically headphone jack 3.5 or one eighth jack. I've seen XLR. So I've seen kind of a gambit of different connectors, quarter inch I've seen for a connection into a house system. And most of the time with house systems, I'd probably say 90% of the time, uh, most of the house systems I see they're not that yeah. fantastic. They usually are very small systems. And again, I understand that the owner is trying to not be loud because they may have neighbors, may have requirements, so forth, so on, and have noise restrictions. But also, I know that um, a lot of times they're not sound engineers. They have people who don't know sound, and they think they're doing the right thing by putting speakers into a ceiling and saying, hey, here's a sound system or buying two cheap speakers from Guitar Center or on Amazon and throw them up onto a wall and say, hey, here's two speakers on a wall. Here's your sound system. And then we as professionals walk in there and go, yeah, uh, no. Or they do a ceremony and they have a very beat up old speaker right behind a couple versus where I know most of you guys like to hide stuff and be off center and be off to one side or the other or behind or whatever uh, and have something that's very presentable. Uh, 
when you run into this, when you run into a facility that says, hey, we have a sound system, uh, do you use it? And I could tell you, I steer away from their systems. I actually, facility I just talked to today, uh, we're talking about ceremony and they have their own sound system. And I've been to this facility before and I know the systems that they use. And I'm not a fan of the sound quality uh, of the system. And again, the people working there are dealing with what they have. It's what the, what the facility buys. But again, it's it's like anything else. I'm not a fan for the sound quality. I'm, I guess I'm a, you could say I'm a sound purist. And I explained to them that I'm using my own sound system and my own microphones and I'll take care of everything else. Um, when you run into a facility like that, what is your usually uh, your your thought? Do you do you take the sound system? Do you bring your own sound system in? How do you go about about it? And how do you talk to a facility and say, "Hey, you know what? I appreciate it, but no," or "Oh, most definitely, I will take your sound system." So I can go with Jeff down there in uh, beautiful North Carolina, um, which I'm sure is probably like 105 degrees still down there, and no, no. Oh, oh, it's cool. What, what's well, cool? It, was like, it was like 80 today, but uh, oh, yeah, I was at my son's soccer game this evening. And um, after the sun went down, it got chilly. So I threw wait, this wait, wait, on wait. to warm up. What, what's what's <laughs> chilly? I asked what chilly is. because yeah. Chilly is uh, mid-60s. Oh. But outside in, uh, in the bottom of like a um, – at the high school we were at tonight, um, you know, it was it was kind of down in the hill. So all the cold air comes down. So it may have been cooler than that. So. Yeah, we get uh, yeah, yeah it's similar it's. temperatures because right now here in Conway it's sixty nine, so yeah, it's kind of very similar. But um, yeah, for me, I've only come across um, uh, that possibility <laughs> of once I think in in DJing where I had to use no no more. Um, I had to use someone else's sound system, and it was actually my cousin's. He has a uh, a venue, Dewberry Manor, Dewberry Farms, and uh, they. Yeah, it's, it's just like you said, buddy, they are right next to a neighborhood and they try to keep the sound down. Uh, so they have ceiling on this outside venue. They have uh, ceiling mounted speakers pointing straight down and he controls them. So I hook basically into that with a uh, either a quarter inch or an RCA. And it doesn't get very loud, you know, for me, but I understand why they do it. Um, and for him, you know, for that setup, uh, there's no other choice. You know, that's, you know, if you play there, that's what you do. You, you, you know, they let you know beforehand, you know, don't bring speakers because you won't be using them. So the only thing, the only time I did use a speaker there is in the ceremony in the barn, uh, just a small portable battery powered speaker. So, but for the ceremony or for the uh, reception, yeah, it's all their system. And that's not that unusual for, you know, for some venues, like you said, you know, especially when they're trying to, uh, you know, keep the sound at a certain level. So, you know, it is what it is. They pay me to play music, not to be loud or be soft or whatever. They play me to uh, pay me to play music. So that's what I do. Okay. And then um, when you run into that with your, uh, again, this, your, it's your family member, you know, that owns a venue. Um what happens if someone says, no, I want to use my own speaker system, but I, you know, what's a decibel rating? What's, you know, when there's pushback and they say, hey, let me use my own stuff. Do they say, no, you can't use it? And then the DJ yeah, turns yeah, back it, to the that, customer and go. At this particular venue, it's like, yeah, you 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 do not uh, bring speakers. You know, you, you use ours and that's it. And and it's because they live so close to a neighborhood and um, and they have had complaints. And the only way they can continue operating is to not have complaints so i get it you know people can still have a good time they can still get out there and dance or whatever and you know it is what it is so oh yeah yeah and you know a lot of times it's decibel readings and decibel amounts and i think a lot of a lot of djs out there and not everyone but a lot of djs out there uh just think red lighting's headlining you know they don't want the volume up all the way versus you know if, if you have a restriction sound restriction area you may have to, you know, play way below what you normally play and go into something that's more delicate, you know, and if you have that, 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 that feel to it, if you're only allowed to have 65 decibels, that's allows you can go. That's allows you can go and that you get to play. I've, I've done venues like that to have that, you know, limits of 65 decibels, which 
if you don't know what 65 decibels is, that's basically a car driving down the road, 65 decibels driving past you, you get 65, 63. Normal conversation like we're having right now, it's 63 decibels. Um, and that's one of the things like I try to have for like cocktail and dinner is about 63, 64, 65 decibels uh, to cover and to fill, but not be overly burdened for people so they can have conversations. And I can hear conversations over stuff. Uh, let me go to Matt out in California, a man who loves, you know, being loud <laughs> and makes no qualms about it. But if you end to a facility or have your end to a facility that says, hey, uh, you got to use our sound system, uh, what, what what do you do? Um, I had that once um, and now never again. It's, um, I mean, like, I know the venues that make you do that. I do have one actually coming up, but theirs isn't that bad uh, from what I've heard. But it's just, it's not, like, the one this weekend, they were big ravers. And, like, you know, initially I was going to bring two subs, two speakers. And then I'm, like, in the corner. So I'm, like, oh, I'll just put one sub, two speakers. And they're, like, oh, well, there's a decibel limit and blah, blah, blah. And it was listed on the agreement you signed. I'm, like, what agreement? I don't read anything. Or she's, she's, like, didn't you read it? I'm, like, no, I don't read those. Um, so <laughs> I do. I scanned it. Let's say I scanned it. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it was way up in the mountains. There wasn't any neighbors nearby. Um, so, but they said it was 95 inside decimal limit. So that was, you know, plenty loud enough. Uh, I was over that by far, but I didn't really care. And we, she, she told me maybe, I think, twice to turn it down, but it wasn't like anybody complained. She was just like, we can hear it pretty loud outside. I was like, yeah, that's how speakers work with an open bar. You're or an open bar and you're going to hear it outside because there's no insulation in there. Uh, and the door is wide open. So, like, obviously you're going to hear it outside. Um but I mean, it was, it was fine. It was just like, I, it, when the venue has a decibel limit or they make you use your own system, I just, I can't deliver the experience that I'm trying to deliver. It's just not possible because I need it loud. I need bass and I need to just not have to worry about sound levels. Like let's let me do my thing. So I, I can't stand those venues. And I, I say I refuse to do them, but I'll, I'll do them for an extra thousand dollars. Make it two, but I just yeah. We luckily we don't have very many of those, and the ones that there are like don't require you to use their system. It's just there is one if you want to use it, but I like they very rarely say like no, you have to use ours. So I do I do know that uh, some of the venues in California and some areas you know, outside venues um, they have a lot of sound restrictions, and they you know close you guys down out west early. You know ten o'clock at night, it's, it, you end. For here in Midwest, 11 o'clock midnight is normal. Like I had a wedding um, going on now th uh, three weeks ago um, in Leaf River, Illinois, which Leaf River, Illinois is like 40 minutes, 45 minutes away from the Iowa border. It's pretty far west. It's like two hours west of me, two, two and a half hours west of me. And um, they were outside and they were farms, so they had no limit. But you're outside, you're on a, you know, a patio playing music, and I'm still don't want to be overly loud because again, you fill the patio up, you're fine. But the thing is that you know, like that, you're not worried about it. But I've run into facilities that have sound limits because of the fact that being outside, you have that you know your neighbors or someone in the area complains or the municipality in the area, be it county, state, whatever. Um, the, the municipality there that has jurisdiction over the area says, Hey, you know, people are complaining in the area about your venue. And again, I understand Jeff's cousin that has a venue. He doesn't want to lose that business. That's his business. He wants to make the, you know, government happy and the municipal uh, part happy. And again, a lot of people in, in municipalities have no idea. We did a wedding earlier this spring of uh, this year. The decibel limits 55 decibels at the fence line. And we had, uh, vehicles drive by on the road behind us and they were making more noise driving down the road so it, it sometimes it's people putting a number of things they don't understand what 55 decibels actually is versus you know it, you know it sounds oh 55 decibels that sounds awesome but they don't understand that they're talking louder than 55 decibels and they don't understand that you know it, it's 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 a it's really super quiet you can't you know do the right things for it but sometimes you have to like, you know, say, okay, you uh, try and work within those parameters. So cool thing. Um, my other uh, 
friend on the East Coast, on the other Carolina, <laughs> do you uh, run into, have you run into any venues that say, hey, we have a sound system to plug into and, you know, you're going to have to use this. You can't use your own, uh, like a church or anything like that, because I know you do some church events and have done church events. Uh, yeah, when I was, yeah, um, when I was at Beach Church, I did use their sound system because I already knew they already had a sound system, and it's a really good sound system with six R- RCS speakers, two JBL subs, and a uh, Behringer X32 mixer that I can plug into, and, and I don't have to worry about bringing my speakers, and I just take advantage of that. But other than that, I just bring my my setup for the most part because they don't have their own dedicated setup. But when they do have their own dedicated setup, I do bring it. And plus, I don't really pay. I, I don't really, when it comes to sound quality, I don't really tell a difference because a lot of my music is like 320 kilobit per second MP3s anyway. So I don't really tell a difference. Okay. But you have no problem using a facility sound system. Because the ones you've used, no sounds like they're pretty decent, you know, having... RCF yeah. and having some JBL subs, yeah. you know, it oh, sounds like yeah. two JBL subs and RCF speakers, six of them, and a Behringer X32 mixer. Yeah, it sounds like it's a halfway decent system, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, speaker wise, I think it's really great. Speak uh, mixer wise, my personal taste is not Behringer, it would be like uh, Alan Heath or Yamaha, but again, that's that's my personal taste. But if it works for him, it works for him. That's the thing. There's no right or wrong. Every has their personal biases, you know. <laughs> same thing, yeah. Same thing, yeah. Same thing with microphones. I when I was at Beach Church, I did Parents Night Out, and of course, I did all these kids camp family nights inside the church, and I just used their microphone instead of bringing my own. Okay, DJ Fire Nathan, Central Illinois, yes. about three hours south of me. Uh, Both a different world. Yeah, it, it, he's he's deep in the farmland. And I'm sure you run into uh, at least one or two facilities here and there that have their own sound system. Um, what do you do when they say, hey, we have our own sound system? Uh, you have to use it. What do, you, what do you do? We actually don't have any venues around here that have their own sound system. Oh, you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Never had that problem. Um, I mean, I, so what's that place? Uh, our memory lane, they have a, um, what's the name of those? They have like a two speakers, they're 15s, they're Bluetooth, they're, they're powered. They, they're basically, if somebody, if they're working there and they want, you know, music, uh, what are those called? Mackies. So they got two of the 15 inch Mackies and the guy just runs them. I mean, if somebody needs to use them during a ceremony, they're there, but they don't request you to use them. Um, that's the only place that I know of that has, I mean, it's not like really high tech. It's they're on speaker stands. They're laying, setting up against the wall. I mean, it's, it's not like big, we just don't have the venues like you guys do around here. Um, I mean, you've seen our gig logs, a lot of stuff, people are getting married in BFWs. I mean, that's another thing. A lot of people around here, you know how bad Illinois, excuse my French, sucks. <laughs> um, they, we just don't have a lot of, you know, good stuff. I mean, Champagne has some good stuff. Um, Springfield probably does, but I don't DJ up in that area. I think the furthest I've ever went was Evansville to do a wedding. And the venue there was basically the same thing as a VFW or Legion. I mean, it wasn't that, but it wasn't nothing special. Um, well, I'd have to go back know, and look at my... You know, if you want to take a little ride about three hours north, you can come up by me and DJ a wedding with me. You're always welcome to. You know that. <laughs> oh, I know. I just, I'm so busy right now. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> I've got, so that's the thing, too. I've had uh, a few gigs this year, this fall anyway, where I've just ran sound. Uh, I did the deal for the uh, corporate uh, window company. They had their yearly picnic. Um, so that was cool. I've got another one I'm doing this weekend. It's a, a the Lincoln Fire uh, Fall Fest. So we have uh, we've got Charleston Fire, which is a paid department. We got Mattoon Fire, which is a paid department. That's our big city departments. And then we have a rural country department that's from um, uh, like it's right on the borderline of town. We've got one here in town. There's one in Mattoon that's on the outskirts of 
Matt Toome. We've got one in Lerna. So they're basically our country fire department um, to the south. So uh, they're having their annual fall fest uh, this weekend. So I'm going to be running sound, doing kind of a cool little uh, experiment with crank up stands and 15 inch speakers. So we're going to see how that turns out. All right. 15 inch speakers and crank up stands, which uh, so you know. she's. So the lady that hired me uh, is wanting, because I'm going to be set up. I mean, it, this whole park is going to be huge. This is kind of the central park in town. There's going to be food, demonstrations, touch a truck, water ball, which is basically like tug of war with fire hoses. It's not really tug of war. You just shoot the ball to see who can blow the ball the furthest or something like that. I know it's a difference. But the only thing is it's only supposed to be 59 or 58 or 57 degrees Saturday. So it's going to be a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, oh, yes. they're, uh, that's going to be fun but the lady asked me she's like I just need to make sure we get the sound because she's going to be making an announcement that there's a ceremony at 9 o'clock in the morning um, so she's like I'm like well I can put speakers right in front of my tent and then I can put another set of stands that go up 10 feet and I can crank those speakers way up over the other tents and have one facing one way and one facing the other so it will throw the sound further so that's that's going to be quite the uh, quite the setup, and of course, you know, I'll be running the drone, so yeah. throughout the yeah. entire park. I know there's a lot of people that, and and you're gonna you're gonna see this in my next gig log. I kind of ranted a little bit at the ending of the video just because I like answering my comments through video. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but towards the end of this next gig log, you'll see which hopefully will be up tomorrow. I'm gonna have to stay up late tonight to get it done, but um, so. People ask me, why are you always out walking around, taking video, taking pictures? You need to be staying behind your DJ booth. Well, if you want the cool gig logs I do, most of the time it's during dinner. It's, you know, I'm playing music or I'm doing something and I've got time in between songs to run out and take some video. Or it's sometimes it's not even necessarily me taking video. Sometimes I have other people uh, taking video. But, I mean, to get the cool shots, looking back at my setup or casting out against the crowd or walking through the church to the gym or something like that to show people what's going on. Um, you know, I got to do that to, to get those shots. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to like be not the DJ, but I'm trying to get the shots for the gig logs. So I'm trying to make cool gig logs. And sometimes you can't, especially with the drone. I mean, I can fly the drone from my, my booth or my tent or whatever. So it's, that's not too bad, but I'm trying to make, my video is better, and I think the drone has added something to that. I don't know if you all add drone footage to your stuff if you're doing outdoor events, but I think drones are pretty cool. They they definitely what, uh, add something to a video. What what drone are you using right now? It is. Well, I think Jeff's got right one. Now. Right, Jeff, you want I one? I got right? a case. No, oh, man, I want one. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a drone pilot, and I don't want a drone. That's that's a. Too much, uh, way too many restrictions on the, on them to have fun. Yeah, I use I use this for some of my uh, videos. This old. So this is the DJI uh, Maverick Mini Two. Now this is the small one. I gave I got this on a deal on Amazon Prime back in was it July? I think it was. So these are normally six hundred bucks. I got this for like three hundred bucks. So fifty oh, wow. percent off. Yeah. So I've had this thing 1,200 feet in the air. It will go higher than that, but I don't want to lose it. I mean, I fly this thing all the time. It's it's awesome. I've got three batteries. i got the Fly More kit. It folds up. I do want to, however, get a bigger one. I mean, this one only has one aviation light on it, and I really don't want to add more weight to it because it's only 249 grams. You start adding more weight to it, and by putting lights on it and stuff, uh, it doesn't fly super good. Uh, another thing that sucks, if it's super windy at a gig, I can't put this in the air because it won't sit still. Uh, if you look at my newest video on New Horizon, uh, where I was flying above, taking some video, you will see that drone was going up and down and left and right because the wind. It wasn't necessarily its GPS capability. It was just the wind was moving it a lot. And it wasn't only, but I don't know, maybe 20 feet in the air, 30 feet maybe at the max. Okay. So. Um, but yeah, there is there is a lot of restrictions. You do have to have a license if you use it for certain things. Um, there's, I mean, it's simple to get the license. It's like fifty bucks, and I mean, it just there's certain things you're not allowed to do. I know there's people that do them and get away with it. 
Um, but I mean, I'm not, I mean, you're not supposed to fly over people like right over them. If you're up high enough, it's, that's okay. From what I've been told from my other drone pilot, uh, that's been teaching me stuff. So I will say if you're going to get a, um, a drone, DJI's drones are the easiest to learn. They are, I, I mean, at, you can use this for home. You can use it for your DJ gigs. I mean, if you're wanting to take a shot of your setup from the air, fly it up 10, 20 feet in the air and get a picture. Um, another thing, if you get scared at what you're doing and you feel like you're going to wreck, let go of the sticks. It'll stop dead in its tracks. If you feel like you can't get it home safely, just hit the return to home button. It'll come right back where it landed or took off. Wow. So, I mean, it's, it's a good beginner drone. DJI is, I think, a Chinese company, but I mean, they make some good quality stuff. As long as you don't wreck it into a tree and break it, well, yeah, it's okay. That's, but I know. Do that. So, Jeff, the, the one, Jeff, since you are a licensed uh, drone pilot and you know the restrictions, like can't fly within so much distance of aircraft and an airfield, and there's some, there's a lot of restrictions, especially here in Chicagoland, which is a you know major city. There's more restrictions than. By Nathan, or I'm sure about you. If you go for a little further out and stuff like that, uh, what is your favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite drone? Is there a drone that you like flying when you have to fly one, or you just borrow someone else's, or do you have your own? Uh, the the station that I work for, the TV station, has a drone, and um, I haven't piloted that in a couple of years, but I did pilot it for a while. Um, and there's a lot. There's a, I mean, it's um, it, there's a lot to actually get a license. You got to take a test. You've got to study for that test. It is damn hard. It is very hard test. Um, and it's, I want to say it's like 150, 200 bucks, something like that to, uh, to pay for the test. Uh, you got to know all about class A, class B, class C airspace. You got to know everything. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of restrictions to legally fly a drone. Uh, you can't just fly a drone by yourself. Legally, you have to have a spotter. You have to pilot, and then you have to have a spotter. Um, if you are using it for your business, if it's a DJ uh, business, or if you're a real estate agent or whatever, then you have to go by the, the rules and the law. If I just want to buy a drone and walk out in my backyard and fly, you don't need a license. Um, but the minute I use it for my business, that's where that's where it becomes tricky. And uh, you could probably get away with it. You know, if you're, you know, staying under the radar, so to speak. But, um, but the FAA where, never where catches you? you. Yeah. Where are they you located? Will all, uh, they will clamp down and put a big, uh, they'll put a big fine on you. It ain't, it ain't pretty. Oh, the FCC, where are you located? FAA coming after you is not fun. The FAA will come after you. For no, there, there's stories all over, uh, you know, YouTube and, uh, you know, just everywhere you know, about people, uh, you know, flying a drone and, and going over the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, what really gets me is this, you ever see that really cool drone shot flying through fireworks? Totally illegal. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, first of all, you can't well, fly even, at night. Even, even you, DJ you, you Bar can't got... fly after sunset. You have to get a special variance to fly after sunset. And that has to come from the FAA. So, yeah, there, there's uh, a lot of restrictions. Uh, now no, that's another thing you have to you have to have proper lighting on your drone you have to have red and green lights you have to have a light on the bottom um, now around here i've talked to a buddy that is that teaches classes and teaches people for drones and he uses a drone for his youtube channel which is not monetized yet and when he started his uh, channel and stuff he said from what i was told as long as you're not making money with that drone you don't have to have a license to use it for a business. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he told me. Yeah, it's uh, it's a fun, it's a gray area. Whether your business makes money or not is not the FAA doesn't care if you're using it for a business. If it's pleasure, it's they they determine they they separate everything business and pleasure. And if you're using it for a business, it doesn't matter if you're making money or not. They're gonna they're gonna require you to have the license and follow all the regulations. So right now. DJI also, I mean, you can get the controllers that have the screens built into them, or I just use my phone through the app. Um, but it will, if you're in a restricted area, 
as soon as you pull up your fly, uh, uh, DJI Fly Go or Go Fly or whatever it's called, um, it will tell you you are within a restricted area. It will come up on your screen and say this is the restricted area. And sometimes if you're too close to that restricted area, it will not let the aircraft take off. Yeah, it, you can't uh, launch. It won't let you launch. The newer ones, uh, the old ones would let you launch. The newer ones in the past like uh, four or five years, they will not launch if you're in a class A you can't you can't launch yeah i, I do know more and, you know I, i'm not i do I'm know not more out there trying to go ahead buddy i'm sorry <laughs> i do know more and more law enforcement agencies are using uh the drones because they search for uh, victims for rescue someone's lost or someone doing criminal activity they lose you know i've seen it on tv a few times between infrared and searchlights and so forth so on um and those guys who fly it again, they, they go through the FAA uh, requirements. And I do know, I, I seen DJ Barr. He uh, flew a drone, I guess, in New York. It's it's one of his videos or uh, older videos. He flew it, and then uh, one of the uh, New York, I don't know if it was um, New York City Police or they have so many different agencies there, but it's a law enforcement agency. Uh, they grabbed home and said, "Hey, you can't do that. Can't fly. This is a restricted uh, airspace." And yeah, that's your thing. Know what restricted sure airspace you're... is and where it's at. You've got to make yeah, sure by, you're not flying in a fly zone. Yeah, by the rules, you have to before before every flight. If it's a a, a legal flight for a business, you have to research where you're taking off from. You have to have permission from where you're taking off from. Whoever owns the land, uh, you have to have a flight plan. You have to file that. Uh, it's just like flying. I mean, it is the same license as flying a small aircraft. You know, a uh, 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 you know any single engine aircraft it's this exact same license so yeah but you know it, they're fun and i tell you that the, i got a buddy that's in law enforcement and he flies their drone and it's a tether that's the new thing is now having a tether drone it goes up you mm -hmm. know on a, a very small wire it takes it up and um you have full control through that tether you don't have to worry about um any of the uh you know wi-fi or anything it's pretty cool Another thing, if, if you need to pull it down real quick, you can just grab that tether and pull it down real quick, too. <laughs> I think that's in the owner's manual on that one. <laughs> All right. So um, got some comments here. As always, I'd like to go through the comments from previous shows and things going on. Uh, DJ Aga, he, uh, he put another um, – little ditty in here. Uh, I had an event coordinator at a popular hotel for weddings tell me the couples are complaining about rising prices for vendors and DJs. Photographers are asking $3,000. DJs are asking $2,500, $3,000. Venues uh, are uh, beginning about ten dollars to $20,000 with other costs and expensive expenses. People are in a time budgeting and trying to make ends meet. I think vendors might be outpricing themselves. Uh, we see less work, hopefully not, but it might be the budget DJs using Spotify getting a lot of work. Just my thoughts. Um, it's like anything else. Price has gone up for things. Our costs for all the DJs have gone up. Music has gone up. Everything's gone up. If you're subscribed to certain you know, like music services like uh, Pool, you know, a promo only, which I subscribe to uh, for pool music. I get, you know, music all the time from them, uh, which is a licensed uh, direct professional uh, sound system, uh, not sound system, but music system to get those MP3s and music videos, MP4s. Um, Extended Mix, another one I pay per month for to get music videos and uh, get music for, for stuff. So there are a lot of services, but even like services that are not license like bpm supreme they're not a licensed music uh service but i know they just raised their rates for their services so you have a lot of stuff coming up in price insurance goes up every year there's always cost increase uh every year so you know holding the line on a price increase might be a good thing or it might be a bad thing because you know i know um some people here are you know, again, your price for your market. Some people here are one price or they're another price, but it's all boils down to the market you're in. And I'm not sure his market where he's at, 
but I definitely would say that the you have to do what's best for your business. You have to look at your business and say, am I holding the line on pricing? Do I have to increase my price? Because you're there as a business to make money. You're there to pay your bills too, uh, unless you're a charity. If you're a charity or not-for-profit, then you know that's fine and great. You want to give away your services, you know, that's entirely up to you. But if you have a business, you enjoy your business, you have fun at your business, your business needs to make money to pay those bills, you need to look at, hey, what is going on with, your, with that? But uh, explain that to customers too. And maybe sometimes go into them and talk to them about payments. Say, hey, you can make payments to me. You can do stuff and help them financially. Um, and if they again, you have someone who you want to help and take and you and they're, they're a hardship case. You want to help them out and get, hey, you know what? Uh, this, this couple, they're battling whatever. They're doing whatever. Uh, I need to help them out. I want you know, again. You do it's best for your business, but that's not a problem. But I'm, I'm again. I'm looking at it this way. You know, three thousand dollars, twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars for a DJ service. I can see that not a problem because I'm in that range for uh, quite a few, and it's it's kind of become the normal thing because again, I have a lot of expenses I had to put out for that wedding and a lot of technical side of things. Oh, um, I'm saying it doesn't seem like your clients can afford that with the venues they choose. No offense. My, my clients. <laughs> the, the hotel, I was like, is that, are they attending a conference or is this a wedding? I they just, they put no effort into making it look like a wedding venue. It's the, that was the hotel. That's what the customer wanted. They wanted very plain. I, I can't control that part. I, I know. don't control what I can control. You make, uh, you make it look nice at least with uplighting it. Or is, at least the other one, the, the long room. I forget which wedding that was. There's, there's a couple of them, you know, again, we if we can do stuff, you know, it all boils down to the customer wants to pay and how much how right. elaborate they want to go and stuff. It, it's like anything. Uh, someone wants to get very basic. I will still give them good services, but the thing is I have to, you know, look at, okay, what am I giving? What am I doing? Um, everything costs, you know, costs money. Uh, even up lights, every time the up lights go out, you know, I have a couple up lights that are now dead. And I'm like, okay, I have like four bad up lights. One's a battery, which I have an extra spare battery down here. I just got to grab it out of the van and put another battery in. No big deal. But I have one that has a bad board, has no amber on it. I have another one that has no uh, wireless DMX on it. I have another one that, that, you know, the buttons got smashed in the side. And again, they're, they're not expensive lights, but still replacing those lights costs a few hundred dollars, you know, for a, for some lights. So it's just one of the things I look at and go, okay, fine, great. What do I do? You know, do I, you know, have to pass that cost on because I need to pay for them and I need to have them to, to give to the customer and offer it for services, but stuff needs to be replaced and you need to have money coming in. So, Matt, on, on your end out there in California, what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, you're hold your price? Do you think you increase your price? Do you think that people are starting uh, to buckle down on pricing and you think I'm lowering your pricing? What, what do you think of doing? Definitely not lowering, but I've tried to increase mine a little bit not a little bit, probably like 400 bucks for my most popular package. And it, it works and it doesn't like, I think once you go from like right under 25 to like right close to three, people start to get that. Like, eh, it's a lot of money. Um, but I don't know. It's, I, I've had a couple, like I, last Friday I had two that just completely ghosted me cause they just couldn't afford it, I guess. Or they went a different direction. Um, I'm used to booking every inquiry. Like if they reach out through my website, through the form, like that expresses intent. And like for a wedding, like I think my prices and my content speaks for itself. So we book a pretty significant amount of those. So like when I get one that ghosts me or doesn't book with me, it like, I, I, I don't understand it. Like maybe their budget is way less than what it should be. I, I think customers just aren't educated with, what a DJ service costs these days. Um, and they just go with whoever's cheapest. So uh, and I think they also, they, they, they don't comprehend what a DJ service does either. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work. I, yeah. I spend like today, I spent eight hours prepping for my two weddings this weekend and I'm still not done. I got to, you know, make the photo booth template and load it in the photo booth and charge up lights and, you know, get uh, everything packed and ready. And it, it's a lot of work. So I, I think they I, just, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw on social media, uh, Brian S. Red, uh, which also has a YouTube channel, and um, I, I know him, real great guy. He was talking about his prep for DJing for weddings, 
And he was figuring out it's about 40 hours for that week for a wedding. Because all the if you add all the time up, you do meet with the clients, talking to the clients, getting music ready, getting stuff, going there, your day, your wedding, you know, it could be 10, 12, 13 hours, 14 hours, you know, driving back and forth, so, so on. Uh, if you have, you know, a couple of meetings, all this stuff right there, all this time, I, I look at, you know, a few times I looked at it, it's like 42, 43 hours total time put together for a wedding. So it's a little bit more than a week. You know, if you work normal nine to five, you know, Monday through Friday, it's a little bit more than that. And it's, it's a lot going on, especially customers email you a question. Hey, um, I want to change this song or I want to do this or I want to do that. So there's a lot there and I have no problem with that whatsoever. I love that. I love when customers, you know, ask questions where I'm here to help them. And it, again, I have to look at, okay, like any other business, you know, I'm charging a fee for the expertise, but also I'm charging a fee to cover all that stuff they they may need. And, you know, some customers are a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit less of uh, need help or they need less support than other people. But any, any customer I look at, if a customer has a question, they need help with something, I'm there for them in a heartbeat. So is Tracy. We answer back very quickly everything um, because of the fact that we want to make sure our customers are taken care of. And Jeff, I know down in South Carolina, you do more than weddings. You do uh, school parties and – I'm sorry, North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina. I'm sorry. I can think of, I'm thinking of Hunter, South Carolina. I moved you. I moved you a few hundred miles south, you know. <laughs> <laughs> North Carolina – I'm sorry, North Carolina down there. Um, when you're uh, – I know you do more than just weddings. You do you know corporate events. You do all this other stuff. When you do that and you have um, – an event uh, for something. Uh, what do you think about that for pricing? Do you do you are you looking at to possibly lower your price, keep your price the same, or were you looking at that? What do you think of what DJ Aga said? Probably going up over the next um, probably between now and next spring. Yeah, I'll be going up in price because um, I'm, I'm artificially low at, right now for what I uh, bring to an event. Uh, it's only because I have another, you know, full-time job and, you know, it provides insurance and, you know, it pays my way. So but if I were doing this full-time, I'd be charging a lot more. So, uh, yeah, if it's, uh, you know, it, it's part-time gig, you know, weekends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I charge about what I need. I don't want to get too busy because I have a, I have a life. I have uh, kids that, uh, you know, want to go to their soccer games and, and whatnot, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do need to go up in price probably, and that'll happen in the next six months. Okay. Again, that, that's kind of what I'm looking at too. And I know we were talking a little earlier before about whether you're there in North Carolina <laughs> and Hunter in South Carolina, and you and you were talking about getting down into the 60s. Uh, right now here in Chicago, and this is done on uh, October uh, 3rd. Um, so I'm 72 degrees right now at you know um at 8 43 at night but uh my weather changes very quickly um i get a little cooler than uh <laughs> than dj fire does on saturday and we're talking lows I, I saw one night 39 degrees for my low so uh i get a little cooler than you do <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's um, 62 uh, here right now yeah that's I, see to me that's like open window air windows and letting fresh air in and just enjoying that and i still walk around with t-shirts and shorts you know <laughs> uh nathan dj fire down in central illinois uh question for you What's that? um are you thinking of raising your pricing keeping the pricing the same or do you uh do you agree with dj i got um are you, do you think that DJs are charging a little too much money or people are more hunting for bargains or what do you feel right now? What's going on with the, uh, the market in your area? Um, well, I will say, um, I've noticed this with, a, you know, a lot of people are just wanting base packages. They don't care about all the fancy stuff. A lot of people around here are just like, you know, the few people have had, you know, inquire about me this you know they're like um you know we want your you know what what's your packages we don't need a whole lot we just we just need this for two or three hours and you know i honestly hate setting up for only two or three hours it's almost not worth the work because 
I set I set up takes me an hour to set up my base package, and it takes me forty five minutes to an hour to tear down. Um, so there's two hours, so it's a four hour gig. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to bill you for at least an hour and a half on top of the the package. So you know, if if you buy the bigger package, I don't charge you to set up and tear down. But I mean, I'm I'm kind of waiting to see here towards the end of the year, if they're talking about inflation going up more and price of gas, I always monitor gas prices. Um, and I've been known to kind of, you know, if, if gas prices are 350 today and I wake up tomorrow and they're six bucks and it's going to be that way for a while, um, I'm going to raise my prices tomorrow to cover that extra because, you know, I don't know if it's going to go down. I mean, gas prices have been pretty decent this year, I mean, they could be better. I mean, I remember back when we had dollar twenty four gas here, but that was a few years ago. You can't complain. But, uh, We're up at six bucks here. I know, I'm, I, and I, 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 do, I mean, you guys make more. Like, you're if you guys work at a factory or you guys work at a business, you guys are making more per hour there. I mean, a lot of people here are only making minimum wage, and I know there's a lot of what do you call it? People that like, I have a friend. And I've been trying to get her, her to let me DJ her wedding. Well, it was supposed to be, I think, last September. Then it was supposed to be this September. Then they moved it again. I don't know if they're just trying to save up money. But she's like, well, we've got a little Bluetooth speaker we're going to use. I wish the Bluetooth speaker never would have been invented sometimes. But, I mean, some DJs do use Bluetooth or speakers. Screen, so. I feel or like screen. you want to have a license to be able to buy that stuff because then it actually has taken business away from us because – Everyone's like, oh, my friend's got one of these little eight-inch speakers. We're just going to throw it up on a table. We're just going to hook up Spotify. Wow. Although I use Spotify, don't don't, don't talk to me yeah. bad. I've got to get time. Use Spotify. Sometimes I, wish to, I, I just said I use it, Matt. Sometimes um, I wish these services were never invented because that is ruining our business. I wish we can just go back to the good old days with vinyl, CD, and just physical music all together, just owning our music. You weren't even alive right. for the good old days. Yes, I <laughs> was. I was in the 90s. Only Buddy and Jeff have been alive for that long. And maybe mm -hmm. DJ Fire for half of it. I was around that long. You're I only... was CDs and cassette tapes. <laughs> I mean, I listened to cassettes in the car when I was you know, a toddler. I yeah, I did, too, I did too, but vinyl was beyond my years. Dude, when you were a toddler I think, I and listening to cassettes, were... I was making mixtapes. I tapes. think Rhett... I think Rick records were around probably until I was, was five born. or six, five or six, and then they they. But now they're coming back. I do remember having a record player at one point in time with my mom, but I don't remember when that was. But yeah, I mean, I just I don't know. I'll, I if I do raise any of my prices, it'll probably be my base package. My base package right now is um, twelve hundred bucks. I might go up another hundred or two hundred bucks. Um, and, and that's another thing. I might, if someone books me from Indianapolis or St. Louis or something like that, and wants my base package and wants to know what the price is, I'm going to be like, okay, base package is $1,200. And then to go that far, I need an extra $500. Or like that wedding that we did in Evansville, um, was that two years ago, three years ago, something like that? Two years ago, I think. Uh, the people that booked us actually paid for a hotel for two nights yeah. and all the food there. So I was like, okay, I'll give you my, you know, medium package for this price. And you're throwing in the food in the hotel room, which ended up running like eight or $900. So I was cool with that. I had DJ Mike James with me. He helped me on that gig. So it paid for him to be there. It paid for me to be there. It paid for my fuel. I even had an enclosed trailer and all that stuff. So and we got down there, like, we left here at, like, 3 o'clock, got down there at 6, set up that night, went to the hotel, you know, went and did the gig the night, um, that next day, went back to the hotel after we tore down, and then left the next day. So, I mean, it was it was fun. But, I mean, depending, I guess depending on what the client is willing to do, depending on if I raise my prices, but I know my lawn care prices are going up next year. Um, I raised them a little bit this year, but I think they're going to go up more next year. I don't know. Just well, cost, I don't. Know. I want to raise my prices, but I feel like if I, I want to raise my prices, but I feel like if I keep raising my prices, 
no one's going to book me. But then I think, okay, gas prices go up and people still pay for that. So, yeah, everything, I mean, everything's gone up. And, you know, um, I know Matt was talking about California with their gas price over $6. Uh, gas here. So I don't get gas. I have diesel. Every, all my vehicles are diesel. My uh, my wife's terrain, uh, my F-350 and my Sprinter are all diesel vehicles. So I look at diesel prices and diesel here is three ninety nine a gallon for diesel. Uh, gas, I want to say up here it's three, three fifty two, three fifty three up here. Uh, you're probably kind of similar down in Central Illinois. Uh, for the same. Price. What's uh? Yeah. Our gas is three thirty six a gallon for regular, and premium is four twelve. Okay, and Jeff, you said it's about the same. Yeah, about three thirty two today. So you're, yeah, you're about 20, 30 cents cheaper. Right? The one bad thing about Illinois, we have the uh, second highest gas tax behind California. Uh, <laughs> and California has that $6 plus per gallon price. And that's that's one of the things you got to look at. Now, I know a man, a man who has the coolest golf cart and is the best DJ on the beach in all of South Carolina. <laughs> I want to make sure I separate the two. <laughs> uh, Hunter, what about you? Are you... I know you charge per hour I for your services. 50, yeah, I charge fifty per hour for, and it I, add, it does add up per hour. Are you so, looking to? Are you looking because of cost increase of gas and stuff like that? Are you looking to go like you know five dollars more per hour, like fifty five or sixty, or are you looking at? Are you planning to just keep the same price for? Yeah, I'm 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 willing to keep it the same price because if I change it, then no one's going to book me because I uh, raise my prices and stuff. So I'm going to keep it. Okay, so you're you're going to keep it steady, keep it. Plus, I am on, yeah. Plus, I'm on the spectrum. I get I guess I get special money from disability, and if I go too high, I guess it'll be taken away from me and all that stuff. So I'm going to keep it the same. And sometimes I do DJ for free if it's a church or if it's a charity event. Uh, yeah, a, 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 yeah, a, a donation. Yeah, I see. I understand that. I totally understand that. And now you do know if you have cash, you don't have to turn that in, so it won't go against your disability. But stupid camera stand up there. <laughs> so that's that's always the thing. You can always get cash and throw it under the table. And I don't know what you're talking about. It's tough being a DJ on the autism spectrum. Hard. But yeah. you are you are a good you are a good DJ, and again, you I, I watch your gig logs. You know what you're you're doing, dude. I I would I would definitely have you work with me anytime. Just like with Matt, I'd have him work with me. He was a complaint about how my line arrays stink and my sounds not loud <laughs> enough. <laughs> but I'm talking my brother hug and like Matt, <laughs> just sit back, relax, and enjoy it. <laughs> and you know, the one thing is, I do I do appreciate Matt uh, reached out to me and. um we were talking uh, back and forth with some messaging about one of my gigs. He saw some stuff and, you know, it, it, it's always good to have other DJs give you some feedback on stuff too. Cause it makes you go, okay. Uh, and you had to think back what you did. Cause it was, you know, an older gig. Uh, but when you go back and you look at it and you go, okay, uh, what did I do? Okay. I understand why I did that. And it's like, you know, sometimes if you're not there, you don't understand, but it's great having that support when there's friends uh, like Matt and like anyone else watching the, the videos I put up here, some of the gig logs I've done, um, and come back and say, "Hey, you know what? Uh, why did you do this? Why do you do that?" It's not being mean. It's that, "Hey, why, you know, there's a better way of doing it." And that's that's one of the things is being uh, perceptive of what you're doing, but also being receptive on what other DJs are saying and saying, "Hey, I could, yeah, I could, I could have done this, could have done that." It you did what you did at the time, but can you go back? You go always money board and quarterback anything, but uh, next time maybe you may think of the second way of like. Maybe you do this, maybe you do that. There's always there's always different ways to look at things, and that's a great thing about having uh, friends as DJs and looking at stuff. And one of the things I also wanted to say uh, to you guys, thank you guys so much also for being here. I appreciate it. And I always uh, thank you guys as much as I possibly can. And I thank you guys out there watching the show and watching the show on YouTube, uh, especially the new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. And hopefully you're learning some stuff, enjoying it, uh, always get tons of comments. I got one more comment here. This is from DJ Mikey Mike, all the way from Pennsylvania. Uh, first of all, uh, on my contact on my contract, I have a place where the name of the venue plus their phone number and the manager's name. Yeah, that is very important. We had that on our contract too. Um, I use uh, 
uh, Vibo, uh, the, the, app, the DJ app. So people have that on there. And we asked for, you know, the venue name. We asked for who they're talking to at the venue. And that could change at any time. And, you know, a, a phone number. But also I look at online, Google the venue, look who's there. And when, when I had that contact information, is great. Because even though, like the venue I contact today or the venue I contact for my next wedding, I always talk to that person. And that way, it's not only a personal relationship between me and them to get to know them, they get to know me. But also I understand exactly what's happening, what the customer has told the venue on what the customer expects. And that way there's no surprise because what the customer tells me may be slightly different because, oh, hey, I forgot. Yeah, by the way, I'm adding this, doing that. Um, so I'm going to start with Jeff in this one. We only got a couple minutes left of the show. Um, when you get uh, information from a customer on your contract or another customer contact form, uh, do you ask for the venue, the phone number, and the, the contact name at the venue? Always. And uh, I'll say this. There's some, a lot of scams going around out there uh, that are um, pointed toward DJs and uh, others. Uh, and the first thing I do, if, I, if it's somebody I don't recognize, if it's a phone or a, a email message or a, a voice message or whatever, first thing I ask is, yeah, I need your name and address. I need the venue name and address and the venue owner. So I want to confirm everything before, you know, I give you, you know, a yes or a no that I'm available. <laughs> so, um, so that, that, and I just had one recently, somebody, you know, I just told them I was unavailable because they kept asking stupid questions and uh, you could just tell it was uh, from out of state and, uh, you know, Hey, do you take, uh, do you take, you know, certain payment types and, and what, what can I, you know, a lot, a lot of red flags. So I just came back and I said, I'm unavailable. So, but yeah, you know, the first thing I do is where's, where's the venue that tells you a world about the, the gig. And, uh, and, and then I usually like to, uh, touch base with the owner and have their phone number. Absolutely. Yes. That's very important. And then, yeah, I've seen that scam people saying, I have an event on this date in your town. What are you close to the city? It's like, if I'm in North Carolina and I'm in a suburb of your major cities and I, even I'm on the other side of the, of the state from you. Or let's say it's it, it's 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 in here in Illinois and it's down by DJ Fire by by Nathan's area. It's a Mattoon or something like that. And some of this, hey, I'm having a wedding down Mattoon. Would you come down here? Would I go Matt, down there? Matt Mattoon. Mattoon. Everybody Mattoon. calls it Mattoon. It's Matt, like Matt DJ Souls. It's Matt it's Mattoon. Think of tunes, tune Matt Toon. Mattoon. <laughs> There you go. Just no, not Mattoon. Tune, Matt tune. Mattoon. It's country back in town. Tune, <laughs> and then Charleston, here we call it Chuck Vegas. I don't know why, but that's what we call it, Chuck Vegas. <laughs> well, that's nicknames. But again, if, it's, if there's an event down that way, I'm more likely to say, hey, you know what? I'm not, that's a little bit outside my area. Here's another DJ. But they kind of get an idea of that. And again, I've seen that scam. I've gotten an email asking them available and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, uh, Matt, ha, do you uh, have a contact sheet with asking for our venue manager and contact no. information uh, I, when you talk I to don't. a client? I don't. Um, I I used to have a field for coordinator, but I eliminated it. Like the only information, like obviously I get the venue name and address, but I don't like I don't ask for any contacts at the venue. I don't ask for anything like I, I try to make it so that you sign that contract ASAP. I don't want you to have to go discuss something with some manager about what's allowed or, you know, wait for the venue on a time to start. Like, give me my money, sign that contract. We'll figure the details out later. Like, I just need, like, I need the package to start and end time. How many guests you're estimating? I don't even really need that. And then your phone number, email, all the basic contact information, venue name and address. I don't, I don't ask for any venue information um i don't know I, I don't really get this i get the occasional scam emails but uh they're pretty easy to spot okay and hunt uh, hunter what about you do you find out uh, the contact name at the, at the venue or get the uh venue oh, name information not really but when i do get a 
gig uh, booking, they always tell me the name of the venue. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need to know. <laughs> yeah, like this one for next year, September 29th, and it's going to be at the Blessed Barn in Ainer. So, yeah, they already told me the venue name, and they told me until... Uh, he, he actually told me what time, 1 p.m. until 9.30, so that's going to be a long gig. And they well, asked me, you know, if they if <laughs> I do a deposit, and I said no, so it, that's all the information I need. So when it comes to the name of the venue, the name of the the uh, the, the uh, owner and stuff like that, I don't really do that stuff. So, okay. So, uh, Nathan... What about you? What do, what do you uh, do? Do you get a contact sheet? You find out the venue name, the manager, phone number, that information to get yourself going, get started? Generally around here, if if someone calls me, I generally know the area. I know who the managers are. I mean, this is the town where everybody knows everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, I generally know everything. Like, the wedding I did in Evansville, once I found out I was booking it, I knew, I mean, I knew who I was booking it for. I've, I've had a few people, like, I'll post a deal on my uh, DJ Fire deal, and someone will send me a message and say, oh, hey, I want to book you. Can I have your phone number? And I'm like, it's right there on my logo. So if you send them your number, generally they'll use your number for some sort of scam. So that's another red flag that you guys might want to watch out for. Um but I mean, I, I don't generally have a whole lot of scams. But no, I mean, I've got paperwork and um, stuff that they will um, fill out. You know, I've got papers that will. It's a contract says, you know, cancellations. If you cancel within a certain amount of days, no, nope, you know, if you've paid in full, um, which I do have some people that will book me and they're eight or nine, ten months, close to a year out, and I'm like, okay, we well, only have to pay. Um, you know, your booking fee, which is 50%. That's how I do it. 50% of your uh, total. So if it's $1,200, you're giving me $600 to book your deal. If you, you know, cancel, I've got on there. I don't remember what it is. If you cancel within so many months, if you paid in full, 50% uh, of your deposit is refundable. Basically, if you cancel anything before, what is it, five, four, four or five months before your date, nothing's refundable. I've got stuff in there that they put all their venue on, their contact stuff. They sign that generally the day that I book them. I make a copy, give them a copy. I've got a copy that goes in my filing cabinet. I hand them a packet, not a packet, it's like three pages of, you know, your wedding party name, so I know how to announce what song you want for your ceremony, for the bridal part for coming up. You know, oh yeah, that, that's that's the normal, the normal stuff. That's yeah. that's you know that that's that's great. But you do get the, the contact information and the phone number, which is the important stuff. The first initial important stuff. The rest of the stuff, it's all about setting up the actual event. Um, one last thing to Jeff, uh, I noticed your. Uh, furry child keeps coming in and uh bugging for treats uh what's your furry child's name kaya kaya very pretty name she's a and... full-blooded siberian husky she's pretty decent for a husky some huskies are crazy but she's she's pretty cool she seems like she seems like a fun little pupper my uh my furry little kid is running around somewhere probably with her mom um she usually she comes in here a lot of times she'll nudge my arm you'll see my arm go down that's me petting her. So it's like she's black. So she kind of blends in to the back here. <laughs> so you can't see her too much versus, uh, you know, you don't have a curtain behind you because you don't have a treadmill behind you. <laughs> um, So I want to thank you guys all for tuning in tonight. And I appreciate it. We're going a little bit, a few minutes later than normal, but that's okay. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. Again, you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you smash that like button. Uh, click that subscribe button and make sure you make sure you knock the bell for the bell icons. Follow all of them on their social media. Good to have DJ Fire back in the round yeah. table again. <laughs> and hopefully we'll have everyone back next week uh, as always. But again, we can't do this without you. So thank you. Thank you for watching. And thank you for supporting the channel. Appreciate very much and appreciate the panel for tonight. Hunter, send us away, sir. Out.